It's been a while since I've made an upgrade for the milling machine, and one that seems to get overlooked a lot is a depth stop for the quill. It's pretty much a tool that allows you to repeatedly drill holes to the same depth. It's a feature that's found on most drill presses, and I've found them to be very useful in the past. Now there's many ways you could go around making a depth stop, but the design I'm going to settle with is a clamping ring very similar to the design used on the drill press I have. Initially I was going to use some aluminium plate and make a clamping ring very similar to the one that I made for the spindle lock, but the stock was a little bit thin for the job. Thankfully I had some 1020 grade steel on hand in the correct diameter for the job. All I have to do is cut off a small disc. And I have to admit, even for me, this is a pretty tough cut. With the disc cut off, I need to remove the inside material to form the ring shape that I need. Instead of boring out the material, I opted to take a bit of an unusual approach. Long time viewers of my channel would know that the way that I've set up the motor means the lowest speed I can get is about 3 to 400 RPM. Doing it this way gives me a lot of torque, which is good for taking very heavy cuts, but it's bad for what I want to do at the moment. So bear with me here. What I've done is I've mounted the Sherline spindle to the lathe using a mount which I made a while back. The Sherline uses a variable speed motor to drive the spindle so I can get the RPM really low. I was going to do this on the Sherline lathe but the 80mm stock was just too big to fit on the lathe. The next thing I did was ground in a trepanning tool from a broken end mill. A japanning tool is really just a regular parting blade with more clearance in. The aim of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to part out the centre bit and remove it and that will save a lot of machine time. And whilst I knew this was a long shot, the results are pretty much what you'd expect. I couldn't get the RPM low enough for it to properly work, nor was the motor powerful enough, and it just wasn't rigid enough. I think it was worth giving it a shot. I have used this exact setup once to Japan out a piece of aluminium, so it does work, but steel was really pushing it. I did try using a hole saw to get through the centre, but the mill just wasn't powerful enough. So I put it in the lathe, and I started to machine it. Now the ring diameter I'm looking for is about 68mm so I can get a nice slip fit on the spindle. To test the fit, I'll have to remove the DRO bracket. And the ring slips on perfectly. So I'll remount it in the lathe and I'll clean up the outside. And when I use the outside of the jaws like this, I always chuck up a piece of steel in the tailstock and feed it into the spindle bore. Doing it like this means that if the ring flies off for any reason, the rod should catch it. With the ring machined in, I'll take it to the mill and I'll cut in a 25mm flat across the top. On the flat, I'm going to weld in this piece of steel which I cleaned up off camera. 
I recently got a new welder. So instead of making ugly welds with a stick welder, I can make ugly welds with a MIG welder. It's been about 7 or 8 years since I last used a MIG welder, so you'll have to excuse me for these rather poor welds. I'll have to get a bit more practice before they start looking somewhat decent. Well the welds don't look all that nice, so I'll have to clean them up a little bit. The next thing I'll drill will be the clamping holes for the ring. The next thing I'll do will be to cut out a 4mm section using the slitting saw. The slitting saw that I'm using here is a little bit blunt, so I'll take multiple shallow passes rather than the one deep pass that I normally do. With that done, I can now tap the clamping hole. Overall, that went pretty well. I still managed to crash the spindle into the work like I did last time, however I caught myself pretty early on before I could do any major damage. Apart from that, it looks pretty nice. The next thing that I need to do is weld on an arm piece to the ring, and I'll make that from a piece of steel section. I'll clean up the section on the mill, and I'll remove the mill scale with the fly cutter. I'll be welding the arm on at about a 135 degree angle. I'll mount it in the milling machine and cut the flat in. And that's the ring done for the moment. The next thing to make is the depth stop bracket. I'll be making it from the same 10 by 25 steel that I used before. I'll clean it up on the mill and then I'll mount it at a 45 degree angle. I don't have a precision angle block, but a combination square body will do a good enough job. I'll remove most of the material, only leaving a very small piece of material at the back. I'll then heat it up with a torch and get the material soft so I can bend it. The last time I did this, I was a bit impatient and when I tried to bend it, the material was too cold and it cracked and it broke off.
At the mill, I'll drill in an offset hole for the mounting hole that I'll use to bolt it to the mill. Then I'll drill in a hole for the depth rod. The piece of metal I'll be using for that is going to be 15mm in diameter, so the hole needs to be at least 15mm. Now at this point with the hole done, I realised I hadn't left enough clearance for the locking ring and the bolt that I'm using to bolt the bracket on. So I used the mill to take off some of the material on the back face. In doing this I did take off a little bit too much and I milled through the weld material so another trip to the welder and I can finish this part. Next I'll drill the mounting hole in the milling machine. Where you do it is entirely up to you but do it where there is enough space for this part. The space that makes the most sense for me is to drill through the chamfer at the front of the mill. With the bracket screwed in, I'll mark out and drill the hole for the depthing rod. Now this isn't necessary, but I'll ream the final hole to size. The last time I did this, I incorrectly used the wrong RPM for a reamer, so this time, let's not repeat that mistake. And the hole came out a lot nicer than it did before. Next, I'll machine the depthing rod, which I'll make from a piece of 50mm steel. I'll face down the end, and then I'll turn it to a half inch in diameter to fit snugly in that ringed hole. With the fit established, I'll turn down the end to accept an M8 thread. And whilst I'm at the lathe, I'll also clean up the surface finish. The final thing I need to do is cut a slot down the middle of the rod. The end mill left a few burrs, so I'll clean that up. And that's the part done for the moment. Next, I'll make a brass thumb screw to lock the height adjustment ring. I always enjoy turning brass, but here is pretty important since the brass won't mar the steel.
The final thing left to make is the height adjustment ring. I'll take the outside down to about 22mm in diameter. I'll rechuck the part and then I'll drill out the center. I'll then use a boring bar to bore it to 15mm in diameter to fit onto the depthing rod. Finally, I'll drill and tap an M6 hole for the thumb screw. With that done, we can now assemble it. I'll slip the ring onto the spindle and then align it with the bracket. And I found that it is quite important to get it properly aligned. I'll feed the rod through into the assembly and then I'll bolt it in place. Finally, I'll slip on the depthing ring, and that's the assembly done. Evidently, this is a little bit different to a normal depth stop that you would find on a dual press, but I think this is a lot more suited to a milling machine. Since there's no markings, it's going to have to work in tandem with the Quill DRO that I already have. I'll have to pre-select the depth and then lock off the height, and from there, the quill stop will work at the selected depth. Doing it this way just seems to be a lot more accurate. However, if this style doesn't suit you, you could always mount a ruler and some sort of threaded rod to make a more traditional style one. The final thing left to mention is this depth stop is repeatable to only about 0.1 or 0.15 millimeters, which in my opinion is quite good for a depth stop. Of course there is a bit of flex in the assembly, but I think 0.15mm is perfectly acceptable for a depth stop like this. Anything more precise and you'd probably want to use the fine feed to get the hole perfectly to size. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I guess see you next time.